Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Little Witch Academia episode 2. Uh, a little bit late on this one, but uh, it's better than getting other. Anyway, uh, basically, this episode starts off with uh, Akko and I guess getting ready for school, getting ready for her stay at magic school, and she's excited, thinking it's going to be this grand, you know, learning about spells and all this stuff, magic. But uh, yeah, so she's getting ready, getting ready getting hyped to go, but she's in her room in the meantime, mean, meantime with the other girls, a uh, lot, and Susie, Saucy, whatever, trying to basically use her shiny rod to command things. Basically, she's just trying to make magic happen, and it's not working like she thought. So it's kind of funny just seeing that scene, just her trying to just wave the, the staff around, or wand, or whatever you want to call it, trying to get uh, anything to happen. <laughs> it's not working. You also see Susie doing some magic with the uh, the, the cockatrice feather she got last week and turning into a like a bug into like a crystal or like a, a gem or something so it'll be interesting just seeing if that if that's just going to be just her way of making some side money or whatever but she it was funny watching her do that and uh, lots kind of in the middle of this these two girls you know very strange girls that she's stuck with so, yeah, we get the first day of school, and Akko's re ready to go, wearing her magic outfit, and they're like, no, we're not, that's what, that's what we wear on special occasions, we don't wear it for a regular class, and studying, and all that, so she's kind of bummed, like, well, okay, I guess, and so she has to go put on normal, clo normal school clothes, and go to, go to class, but when she gets to class, it's not what she expected, it's basically their equivalent of, like, math, science, and, uh, reading, basically, is what they're trying to, it, what I got from the, the three classes they were in is basically the equivalent of that without any practical use of magic. And one of them was just making potions, which obviously uh, Susie really likes. So that's what she's into. But the other two classes were kind of boring for Akko. She didn't understand any of it at all. So she's kind of going to be lagging behind all the other students. But um, Ursula, I guess, on the other hand, is kind of going to be her personal teacher or tutor whatever you want to call her, because I guess both are maybe sort of similar. I guess the Ursula feels a little bad for Akko since she's uh, from Japan, and she's like, well, she's not really going to understand the language at all, so I need to step, we need to help her. So I guess she's agreed to help her, and Ursula's kind of this scatterbrain teacher that is very clumsy. I can notice a lot of the teachers in the office don't really think of her as much as, as a teacher, as she's just kind of this outcast, almost, the way they're treating her. Uh, how I see it anyway, there don't, not very many people kind of look up to her, respect her, she's kind of, yeah, so she's kind of sort of like Akko, and maybe that she's not really welcome there, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe she has, you know, some Japanese history in her, that I mean, that's where she comes from too, she comes from Japan as well, we don't know, but we do, we obviously, the audience knows who she really is, you know, we all, all know that she's, and she is trying to chariot. At least is what the two OVAs kind of hinted towards, that she is, in fact, the Chinese Chariot, who has been hit in hiding for, I guess, according to the people in the story, uh, 10 years. So it's been 10 years since she was last seen doing any magic. And uh, we also get the scenes with Akko meeting Diana for the first time, which is sort of similar to the OVA way they met. They kind of, she kind of makes fun of her and just like, you work that Chinese Chariot, and, like she's a fraud. And they go in deep with it, more, not really deep, but they talk about it. That Shiny Chariot is not seen as a witch in the magic community in, the, in that world. She's more seen as like a an entertainer who would use magic for like, to, you know, entertain and do things for children. And she wasn't really seen as a witch back in the day. So, they kind of get a little bit of that, making fun of people that like her. And it seems like Akka is the only one that really sees Shiny Chariot as this, you know, uh, this person who got her interested in magic. Everyone else just sees her as a fake or a fraud. And we also have Ursula kind of overhearing this and even more hints towards that she really is Shiny Chariot because she is just seen kind of listening and not saying anything, kind of feeling bad, but she's surprised Akko kind of stands up for Shiny Chariot. But they go to a step further where they go outside and, you know, Akko's just like, okay, they want, Diana's like, you want to prove that you have this power and this staff's real. So this go outside and test it. So Akko tries to bring his statue to life. And it's a little funny bit, but uh, she can't do it, obviously. Diana can do it, no problem. And it just shows the, you know, difference in power between the two characters and 
kind of how the two characters are both different, just how they approach magic, you know? Akko being this one who wants to rush into it. She just wants to skip the easy steps and just get into magic. Diana, on the other hand, she was, she's more, you know, she's probably studies all the time. She comes from a big family of magic users, so. And she respects magic. She doesn't just, you know, go around using spells for out of nowhere. So, she's the opposite of Akko, obviously, so. And after that, Akko kind of, she's feeling kind of down and depressed by being you know, shown up by Diana so easily. Kind of hanging out with the other two girls, just playing with her cards, and it kind of explains where the cards and all that were, why she collected them, you know, at the time, everyone was in the, into Shiny Chariot when she was a kid. So it's, for her, it's fun to collect those cards it was at the time. And each card kind of holds a special meaning to her. She kind of remembers stuff from her past about when she, you know, just... It's, they're important to her, I guess, is all they're trying to say with that. And, uh, so yeah, she even, even has each of the phrases on the cards memorized. Each of them have a kind of story, kind of a, like, one's a unicorn, it says a little thing on her about it. So she has that memorized, so it doesn't, it does show her that, show us that Akko isn't completely dumb. She does memorize things, but the way the series is probably going to go about it is, I think Ursula's going to teach her new ways to read the spells and maybe use her own way of speaking to get spells out which they kind of showed in this episode and in the meantime we get another that kind of subplot of the story episode i guess with the jennifer moral tree kind of i guess is dying i guess it's like a symbol of that school and uh so ursula's studying how to bring it back to life but diana kind of walks in there after the teacher's leave and does a spell with some stones and brings it to life and it restores the tree back to normal, but I guess she pumped too much magic into it because it starts going crazy and overgrowing, and there's you know branches falling, up, appearing out all over the school, and it yeah it's kind of crazy. But uh, Akko and the other girls kind of run in there after being you know he, he's seeing it, so they have to investigate because what these characters do, you know they are the three technically mains that we have to follow. But uh so yeah, Diana sees these parasite things pop up like these. These are growths on the, the branches, and she thinks they're parasites. So she starts using spells, but Akko kind of remembers her cards, and is like, wait a minute, that's something else. It's actually not a parasite. It's a, a fairy, and jumps in front of Diana, who's about to blast one of them. So she Akko gets hit. Diana kind of runs to her, and you know, they all feel kind of kind of shocked that she did that. But after learning what the, you know, these aren't parasites. They're actually fairies that are going to be growing, and they come every a thousand years, something like that. So, this is like a rare chance, so I guess Akko uses the card, she remembers the card, the phrase, and Diana kind of helps her pronounce how they say it, and they work together to save the tree and release all the fairies. So, it's, you know, again, Akko being not able to understand spells shows that in this week she can, if they reward, reward it a little bit and help her pronounce the, the phrase. But it was weird that she said that. And kind of went a step further and added extra in this in the the spell maybe that's part of the the card but it seemed kind of and this was a sub thing but uh, it's pretty interesting to see her catch a spell and all that you know visuals obviously and uh so and at the end it kind of Diana's kind of there and the teachers walk back in and her, her lackeys kind of walk into and like oh Diana did this she brought the tree back and all this and. You know, Diana was about to tell him that it wasn't her, someone else did it, it was Akko, in fact, who was the one that saved the tree, but she kind of didn't get a chance to say anything, and just kind of walks away, because she doesn't want to deal with that right now, so, and then, uh, you know, so it obviously kind of shows you that Diana feels bad that she didn't necessarily take the credit, but she was, they just assumed she was the one to do it, because, I guess, in that school, she's, like, one of the highest students and as far as magic goes so yeah she's kind of feeling a little bit you know down that they think she did it because she's such a great mage it's like no someone else was was the one who actually did it but you know whatever but diana it seems funny you know that they are setting up this obviously akko and diana friendship and i kind of hope that's a thing because those two are interesting i mean even though they butt heads you know it's I think that also makes it entertaining to see those two characters. 
and when they work together they you know clearly we've seen it in the OVAs we've seen it in this when they work together they're they're a pretty good team so I wouldn't mind seeing Diana being you know brought into the fold with Susie and Lot as like the fourth friend they can hang out with but I'm gonna guess that's gonna be a while Diana seems to be a person that won't warm up to Akko that fast and Akko's kind of rose people the wrong way it's how she acts and whatnot uh, that's for the episode. I mean, that was a pretty standard episode this week. Uh, extra stuff was pretty funny. Watching Susie use uh, Akko's head as a, like a plantern. Uh, she put this plant on her head, and throughout the episode, the plant was like growing slowly, slowly. I was, I thought that was gonna be like a, a gag until the very end, but they just used it for uh, the uh, yeah the gag I guess of when Diana made the statue come to life. And speaking of that, this animation overall, the statue coming to life, that little bit was cool. It was kind of a like, sketchy looking scene that the sketch artwork and just looked really cool. Not to mention the music and, you know, the characters themselves, just their expressions and all that. It's continues to be, Trigger continues to put, you know, obviously their most budget into this series. since obviously, you know, Little Witch Academy is like their highest, I guess, praise series. A lot of people like it, so... It's been, they have the budget's gonna be more pumped into this, but anything. Uh, Akko's voice actress, I loved her from like, uh, Go Princess Precure, which was Hime, the blue haired girl on that one. And, and she's done other roles back in the day, you know, she did. She was, she's gone from Hunter x Hunter 2011. So she can, she's got this range to her, that's fun. And with Akko, she kinda gets to be a little quite crazy, I guess in certain scenes like every time she said yay it was just funny because it just came off so you know you could almost feel the how fun the voice actor is having with this character with just how she gets to be how she gets to act it's pretty fun listening to her and the last thing we do finally get to see the first ending we don't we didn't see it last week but the ending is you know, it's kind of fun it's a lot like a like a space but not a space patrol we'll go, but like a I would say like a flip flappers. It's more like a storybook type ending. It's pretty cool. Just and it shows you scenes of like Akko have, hanging out with everyone and the magical stuff they're doing. There's even the like I guess the equivalent of like their Quidditch. I know Harry Potter is a big influence on this. So but they have something they like pogo sticks out of their brooms. It looked pretty weird on one of the ending cards. So yeah. Uh, so overall, that was a pretty good episode. Uh, I like what's going on so far. They are, you know, doing some of the stuff in the OVA, but I think this week, maybe episode 3 and 4, where they're you know, away from that and show some new things we haven't seen before. I know Akko meeting Diana and then working together kind of was the thing we've seen in the first OVA and parts of the second. So maybe we'll see some new scenes. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if episode 3 includes the three girls from the second OVA where they had to do the uh, the parade, you know, the mechanic girl, the the chubby girl and then you got the kind of did the delinquent other group so maybe we'll see those three soon i know they are in this series so that's a good thing so i'm wondering what's gonna happen next week but they don't really have a preview so we have to guess <laughs> so yeah i'm just hoping that we see more let me get some ursula and akko interaction next week with them you know working together and teaching her how to use spells but until then, I'll see you guys next week for episode 3. And I, I, you know, I hope you guys enjoy the drawing. I mean, I wasn't sure what I want to do on this week episode. I mean, pretty much spur of the moment, what I, whatever I think of. And I just kind of go with it. So, yep, see you guys next week for episode 3.